डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी welcome once again we are here for video lectures for omkar e and uh, we are dealing with subject software engineering for bca the uh, code is bca 403 so in the last session we saw something related to software risk management we saw what was the need for software risk management process all right and we saw few of the steps of its implementation so in today's session what we will be seeing is uh, risk identification the analysis and planning and the contingency plans that we have for our risk management right so uh, let us start with first topic that is risk identification now when you talk about risk identification it is something a step wherein we are going to identify what kind of risks we are going through while developing our project we might come across several risk to identify those risk requires a high level of skill so risk identification concerns with finding risk when a, which a project is subjected to so whatever my project is going through maybe it is a risk associated with some project then i have to identify that risk that this will help in studying of various problems which are faced by earlier projects so it is like you know a kind of wherein you uh, view you will be uh, knowing it from the previous projects so earlier if you have gone through any project cycle you would have come across some risk a b c now in the uh, next project that you are taking all right uh, you might be having risk a b c but you will try to avoid those risk because you know that in earlier projects we already had such risk a b c so we will be trying to avoid those risk then this will involve catering of project plan properly and checking for related areas which are susceptible to certain risk now in this case it says that we have to properly check out that what all things were there and what are the risk associated for the earlier projects and it requires a huge amount of planning the project planning the understanding of project and understanding the risk associated with the upcoming project it says that the best way is to think a project plan is to convert it into a flow chart and further study related essential parameters so it is always a better idea to convert your project plan into a flow chart so that it is easy to understand and that flow chart can be used to further analyze your parameters that are very much important in the software project it says this is not at that it is highly advisable to conduct brainstorming sessions which shows certain known and unknown factors which affect the project see it is not a one day uh, task you need to have a brainstorming sessions with your colleagues with your fellow colleagues with your seniors with your uh, expertise in order to understand that what are the known factors that yes certain risk will be there and certain risk which is unknown which are really unknown all those unknown risk also should be addressed in this way any decision taken with respect to technical operational political legal social or any internal or external factors gets evaluated in a good manner so any risk which is associated may be political risk may be legal risk may be internal system risk may be external to the system risk any kind of risk will be very much evaluated all right with a very good uh, thought and a process so next it says is this is what is it is representing so when you actually go with a current project you will be seeing that you have so many risks all right the risk identification goes something like this review the past project history so you would have carried out certain projects in the past review all those project the past project history whether you have come across any re, uh, risk during those earlier projects right once you review that past project history now assess the practices that are being followed in the present project so now you relate your present project assess all the activities that you are doing right now currently in the project that is ongoing and come up with a creative ideas for future projects now if you find that your current project is having certain risk which was seen earlier in the projects the projects that were done earlier then in that case what we will do is we will follow a good practice wherein we will try to avoid those risk and all those risk which was there with the 
past project which is there in the coming project I mean the ongoing project will be of course used to you know cre uh, creatively uh, eliminate those uh, risk in the future projects. So, so, this is a current project scenario and this is how a risk identification is carried out. Now, uh, let us assume that uh, you undergo some project, right? you are undergoing some project, a project which is very much similar to the earlier project that you have done, one of the earlier projects you have done. All right. So, when you uh, are doing that ongoing project, the current project, you will be noticing that you come across certain risk and you also know the methods to avoid those risks because you have already done it in the earlier projects. You would have got certain risk in the earlier projects and those risks which you have, you know, you would have got in the earlier projects would have been addressed very well. So, now what you do is in the current project you try to eliminate those risks which you have done in the earlier projects. And in the uh, current project if you come across any risk that would be a new risk, a kind of a new risk which was not there in the earlier project, then the combination of that risk of earlier project and the and the risk associated with the current project can be useful to create a risk free environment, a risk free project code for the future projects. Next, let us see what is analysis and planning, all right. Software risk analysis. For software risk analysis, it is very, very important characteristic of risk management where the risk is located and categorized. So, here what you do first is we locate the risk, we characterize the risk that how, what kind of risk is this. All right. Then once the risk categorization is achieved, level, likelihood and impact of risk gets analyzed. Once you know that this is the category of the risk. Right. Then you, uh, you, uh, you have to analyze what kind of level it is. Level means wh whether it is a very milder one, whether it is a, a low risk, whether it is a very high risk. So, you find its level, you find its likelihood. Likelihood means what uh, this risk comes uh, frequently or this risk comes only sometimes. Right. So, it is not very frequent and impact of risk gets analyzed. And what is the impact of that risk? Whether that risk is actually, you know, having impact on some other product models, uh, modules, uh, if it is harming some other modules, then th that risk is a high risk. All right. Then with likelihood, it is understood that after examination, it is noted about chances of risk which takes place due to certain technical conditions. So, likelihood even says that uh, if that risk is coming only in certain technical conditions, then those risks are, you know, uh, likelihood. I mean, uh, when there is like f some risk is there, all right, and that risk you would notice that it comes only when some technical default comes, like technicality is changing, maybe the uh, a technical uh, system, the platform changes, then in that case only that risk is coming, then that all is coming under likelihood. Secondly, software risk analysis, this technical conditions can be, we talked about technicalities. So, what are those technical conditions? The technical conditions can be technology complexity, all right, you are migrating from one technology to the other technology and it becomes very complex to move from one platform to another or maybe from one technology to another technology and it may arise some sort of risk. Right. Then second is knowledge related to technical aspects with testing team. All right. Certain times testing team would not be you know, having frequent, uh, we would not be thorough with certain kind of techniques that is used with a particular technology, then that also may uh, arise some sort of risk. Then difference which appears among team members. Uh, of course, we are going to work on uh, work on a software with a team, right? So we have a project team, and that team has certain differences. All right. Then the difference also relates to some technicality problems. Then teams spread over wide geographical area. If somebody is sitting there in India and working from some project A, and for the same project A, somebody sitting in South Africa is working from there. So, there is there is a lot of distance. So, communicating over a phone and over an email is going to be very difficult. So, uh, you know face to face of course, cannot happen because one is in South Africa, another one is in India. So, that is you know creating a problem. Use of low quality testing tools, you, you we have today in uh, market, we have so many testing tools. If you use a very low quality testing tools, then that also would relate, you know, that also would arise some sort of risk, which is unidentified. So, there is a technical default. All right. Now, 
Let us see what is software risk analysis. It is important to have an idea about impact as it is required to have knowledge on business which gets affected due to. Now, software risk analysis says that there are certain impacts which are really much very much essential to be understood just like what? Concern related with customer loss, all right. certain risk which is you know uh, going to have the uh, lose of con confidence, the customer gets, you know, uh, we, we lose easily the customers, we are no more into the terms of, you know, uh, a customer, uh, 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 the CRM that is customer relationship is not there anymore. So, second is cause of business suffering. This risk will also, you know, uh, at, a, at a very uh, slow pace, but it is going to of course harm your business also. So, it is going to be cause of your business suffering also. Then reasons for loss of reputation to the society. Now, if you are giving some product which is not workable and it is having so many bugs and so many risks associated with it, then in that case, of course, we will be losing our customer. Apart from that, we will lose our reputation also, right? So, company reputation also will be lost. <coughs> Monetary losses are there, of course, we will suffer with monetary problems uh, because we, 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 we did not deliver a product which was very much, you know, risk free and uh, that which customer like, right? This customer did not uh, like the product because it was having so many risks associated with it. Then in that case, we are of course going to suffer with the monetary issues. Legal actions against the company, some would fire some sort of case that this was the thing and you know we, we fall into all those legal issues, <coughs> excuse me. Termination of business license and sometimes it might happen that you would have you know have to terminate your business because of the legal issues that created with your that is created with your company from the customer side, right. <coughs> then again. It is found that level of risk is identified using what are the parameters that identify the level of risk. All right, one we talked was technology that is technicality problems, second was impact and now the third one is the level of risk. Now what are the level of risk? First is qualitative risk analysis which could be defined risk in terms of high, low, medium. Right. As I said that we have three kinds of risk, it would be a very low kind of risk, it would be a medium kind of risk or it might be, it might be a high kind of risk which is going to have impact over uh, some other modules too. So, we have qualitative risk analysis which is falling under high, low and medium. It is found that <coughs> quantitative risk analysis is also there which is applied for software risk analysis and is considered, uh, considered as inaccurate due to risk level which is in terms of percentage that shows hazy picture. See now we are not going to talk in terms of high, low and medium here because it is quantitative right. So, we will be talking in terms of percentage. For example, if I am delivering a risk prone uh, you know uh, software then in that case uh, it is going to suffer uh, a major loss. So, how far is my risk you know affecting my project then it would be maybe 50 percent of my project is risky. So, it is going to be medium level right, but 50 percent is also too high for certain products then it, it might reach to a high level risk also. So, quantitative uh, risk analysis will always talk about uh, uh, the risk associated with the project in terms of percentage that is quantity right. So, those are two levels of risk. One being qualitative, another one being quantitative, qualitative falling into high, low, medium and quantitative always showing into percentage. Software risk planning. Now, we have already gone through what are the analysis, right, technicalities, uh, problems, and then uh, the risk analysis even involves, you know, the type of uh, the level of risk and its impact on a particular software modules. Now, let us see what is software risk planning. Software risk planning is related to explaining preventive measure that lowers likelihood or probability of risk. So, you have to explain actually certain preventive measures, measures that will actually lower down your risk, all right. That is the likelihood and the probability of the risk should be lower down. Then it even says that it explains measures which lower the impact caused due to the risk. 
all right the problems that is caused because of that particular risk what is the impact right that also it will explain the measure of it right then it says regularly monitoring of process to find risks as early as possible you have to regularly monitor your system your the uh, the software product that you are mani managing you are you know developing for its risk and you have to constantly monitor that so that we are able to find out the risk as early as possible this is the initial system risk just check the diagram there is initial system risk certain risk is acceptable certain risk is unacceptable now all those risk which is acceptable can be waived off i mean you can eliminate it easily can be assumed i mean from prior projects you may have the assumption that yes we are going to undergo certain kind of risk we it is well assumed then undiscovered certain factors will be unknown then in that case those are undiscovered risk then come to the other side that is unacceptable risk unacceptable risk are those risk which is not accepted at all for your software such has to be reduced and eliminated or definitely to be avoided all right so once you reduce it now try to avoid the, those risk you have to definitely avoid those risk and then you get the residual system risk all right so this is a simple cycle of your software risk planning coming to the another topic contingency plans right one of the easiest topic now what are contingency plans contingency planning defines function of risk management on your certain project see we have to identify risk we have to identify the risk we have to analyze those risk we have to plan to avoid those risk all right and after successful avoidance of that risk we have to see that further projects that we carry out in our company should be you know risk free that that is been seen in the earlier projects so in order to understand all this we have risk management and following that risk management on certain project is called as contingency planning it says it is required in order to cater in case when initial level of risk tackling strategy fails to succeed this can be better explained with this example we can say that contingency plan is plan b when your first plan that is plan a fails to work all right so when uh, let us say we have two plans to avoid one risk if my plan a fails to avoid that risk then in that case i am using my plan b so that is what is contingency plan i have plan a i have plan b my plan a failed then i am going to use contingency plan that is plan b to avoid certain risk it involves maintaining alternative plan when original plan fails with further put to use when risk serves as reality so it is this contingency plan will work as an alternative plan all right for example if you are to come from rajkot to ahmedabad right so when you are using you come through plan a that is from rajkot to chotila to limri and then to ahmedabad but if let us assume that limri and chotila is not working that that route is not working it is under some construction then in that case you will have to move from rajkot to chotila chotila from chotila there you will have to go to maybe surendranagar from surendranagar you will have to take the route so when that plan a fails you are using an alternate route to avoid that risk so that is plan b and we call it as contingency plan it says that it is noted that possibility of contingency planning started when improvement hard work tends to fail and in such case risk becomes reality see contingency plans are well prepared they are prepared in very much advanced level when you find that certain risks are you know uh, not avoided the 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 solutions that we are providing towards that risk are failing in actual sense then in that case we are starting to build up certain contingency plans all right so that is where it comes into reality when that risk comes into reality we will have to use that alternate plan such type of planning is applied in order to cater risks and call upon fixed reply right so they are used when you see certain risk where in plan of uh, the original plan regular plan fails and we'll have to use the alternate plan in that case it says 
the plant concerned with trigger which gets set up and when trigger reached then contingency plan tends to show certain effect. It says that it is like a trigger all right. It says that the plan concerned with trigger which gets set up. So, when you set up certain plan all right with that plan itself a, an alternate plan is prepared all right. Now, let us say the plan which you are originally preparing fails up then that alternate plan which you were preparing along with your plan A should be used when that plan fails. So, that is what is contingency is when contingency is triggered right. It says such type of planning involves controlling of alternative plan when original plan fails to work it is one and the same. It says that when your original plan fails your alternative plan will be used which is a contingency plan and it is noted that contingency plans work for top 20 percent of risks involved. So, any uh, any risk which are you know topmost risk very high level of risk. So, 20 percent of such high level risk are being used and are being focused are being solved resolved with the help of such contingency plans. Now, this contingency plans are well prepared along with your original plan. So, you need to understand that for any associated risk of your software project there is going to be an original plan to avoid certain risk and there is going to be an alternate plan also to avoid that risk. So, whenever this original plan is failing then in that case at least the alternate plan should work which is nothing but the contingency plan. Such plan comes in use when risks results in reality. So, you find that certain risk is coming yes it is approaching and it has become now real the risks associated with the projects are coming into reality then in that case use your contingency plan go to the alternate plan all right use to avoid that particular risk which is up which is coming there all right or which has already come. The features of contingency planning results in realization from such example. The contingency planning of finance companies prevented risk of large data loss for stock market. So, it says that uh, you know certain finance companies also have contingency plans and when they when they see there is a huge you know uh, rush in the uh, stock market there is uh, lots of ups and downs in the stock market then they have contingency plans which they use that is an alternate plan to avoid that risk in the stock market right. I hope you understand that stock market always has you know ups and downs. So, in order uh, let us assume that a company is having a share price at a very high level right all of a sudden it goes very down then there is an alternate plan to avoid that risk and it is going to reach to a level wherein it can at, at least have a very very you know uh, sharp indication that yes this company is going to deteriorate. So, it comes to a very very uh, sharp conclusion that yes before deterioration let us survive. So, they will have a plan wherein they can survive and that survival plan is nothing but the contingency. So, in order to avoid that risk all right we always have an alternate plan which is a contingency plan. Now, I would like to give one more example. Uh, let us assume that we have a certain uh, we are developing certain project. Now, in the project we come under certain technical problems right that technical problems can be avoided with certain plan all right. Now, let us assume that that plan which we already have built up cannot resolve certain technical problems. Then in that case our company should be able to you know have certain alternate plan also wherein that particular technicality should be solved out should be resolved easily and if this original plan has failed then in that case my contingency plan should have worked all right. So, this is how it is actually working and uh, when you see uh, a company, a company always relies more on contingency plans. Every company be it a technical one, be it a non-technical one always has a contingency plan to avoid certain risk. All right. So, uh, in order to understand this uh, I have given a few example you need to understand it through example. Let us sum up what is there in a particular what we have seen in the entire uh, chapter. Uh, it is uh, what we have seen is risk management, it is software risk management. We saw in this session that 
software what is software risk management now any software comes across certain risk associated risks are always there have to manage those those risk all right so software risk management will help you to manage with that kind of risks all right risk can be technical risk all right can be a non technical risk can be a legal risk can be a political risk any risk needs to be managed so the software risk management we have seen then we saw what is software risk management and its implementation how can we implement software risk management all right what are the steps to implement those software risk management what is the need for that software risk management and why to implement that software risk management all comes across with this topic there is risk identification I, s I, I even taught you how to identify a risk all right the risk identification also has certain steps how to identify that risk and where that risk you know should be associated so we were thinking about the past projects past projects having certain risk we identify those risks and we implement in the current project that those risks should be avoided and if current project comes across some new risk then the combination of that past risk and the new risk shall be awarded further for the future projects so that was coming under risk identification then software risk management analysis and planning i said that software risk management definitely has an implementation but we also have to analyze those software risk risk and we have to plan according to that all right to avoid certain risk so that was talking about the technicality problems the impact of the risk the likelihood of the risk all right and its planning then lastly we saw contingency plans where we saw that there are going to be two plans one is original plan another one is an alternate plan if a company is seeing some risk in the future then they will plan an original plan that yes if this risk is coming we have an original plan but what if that risk comes in actual sense and that this original plan fails then in that case we have an alternate plan to reach to that particular uh, risk and avoid that risk all right so this unit was in particular with software risk management all right and uh, the software risk management one in the next session will be so saying is software risk management two which is going to talk about various uh, software risks associated with our uh, project and how to avoid those risk and further uh, being seen you know uh, the proper channelization of that risk and uh, we will be meeting soon in the next lecture thank you Yaha Parama